Hey, we had a tremendous first quarter, a great start of the year. Our sales uh, grew by 19% um, to 12.7 billion. Oncology did incredibly well, growing by 26%. And for the first time, uh, our oncology uh, business uh, reached $5 billion in the quarter. But everything else grew very strongly too. Cardiovascular uh, metabolism grew very strongly, respiratory immunology. Uh, also the rare disease uh, franchise grew by 16%. If you look at the geographies, every geography grew uh, very strongly, and of note, the uh, uh, emerging markets grew 26%. So a very strong first quarter for, for our company. Yeah, so when you take a look at you know, things like your double-digit growth in that oncology department, as you've just been pointing towards, uh, how much of this year then is about raising capacity in order to, to take advantage um, of the growth that you are seeing in those areas, including vaccines, the RSV vaccine, even obesity drugs? Yeah, we continue to invest uh, very substantially in our pipeline. Our R&D expenses grew by 18% in the quarter. And so we are very much in investing in R&D in oncology, of course, but also across uh, the pipeline. We have an emerging uh, cardiovascular pipeline that is looking very strong. Our respiratory pipeline is also looking very good. Um, same for rare disease, and we are uh, starting to develop um, our RSV, uh, um, HMPV vaccine. So it's all looking very good. Importantly, if you look at uh, new products approved, new data we got in the quarters, new indications, we have multi-billion dollar sales for 2030, just uh, in the data we got in the first quarter. Then we started eight phase three trials. So the company is really booming uh, from you know, every part of the organization. Pascal, can I turn to R&D expense here and, and the line here, increased investment in the pipeline, core R&D to total revenue ratio of 21%. It feels like we're really embarking upon an exciting cycle as AI also comes into the mix, other technologies across your industry. How do we think about how pivotal R&D is at this point? Yeah, it's really a great question. You know, we have tremendous scientists uh, and they come up, coming up with a lot of projects, but they are so smart, we never have enough money to uh, fund all the ideas they have. So certainly artificial intelligence is really coming in very, very uh, handy to improve our productivity in R&D, come up with new targets much faster, optimize the development of our antibodies much faster and, and cheaper. So we are starting to use artificial intelligence across every part of the company, not only in R&D, but also in, uh, in uh, the manufacturing of our products uh, and also in the way we bring our medicines to uh, doctors and patients around the world.